Welcome to the Checkered Floor Garage. This is the Kawasaki Vulcan 750 Maintenance and Service Series. And today I'm gonna to show you how to connect up the carburetor with the fuel and vent hoses. Before we get started, note that I'm running the stock air filter with the stock air box setup. If you've got the ear shave mod, which is basically the pod filters sticking off the carburetor right here on either side, um, your hose system will look a little bit different than mine. I have the stock reed valve system installed. Um, there's one reed, reed valve for each cylinder. If you don't have these, your previous owner did what's called the coaster mod and removed these to prevent the um, deceleration popping from the exhaust and also to declutter. Let's start at the top and work our way down. The air comes in through the air filters on either side here and on the right side of the bike, um, goes in through this plenum. Again, here's the air box and then the air gets distributed to both the carburetors on either side. This hose here carries coolant to the rear cylinder. Let's look at the air injection system right over here behind the air box. As you can see here, there's quite a number of hoses. These hoses are attached to the air suction reed valve assembly, which is here on the rear cylinder, and there's another one that just, um, it looks just like this for the front cylinder. The reed valve allows fresh air to flow from the air filter surge tank into the exhaust port and also blocks any air from returning from the exhaust port to the surge tank. So for the rear cylinder reed valve assembly, this hose gets fed in through that direction. The hose gets connected up to the port on this suction valve that faces the front of the motorcycle. Coming over to the right side of the Vulcan, the um, front cylinder reed valve assembly is right under here, right behind this right side air box. Here's a closer look at the reed assembly for the front cylinder. There it is, I'm pointing to it. The hose attached to it runs back, and I'll show where that connects up in a little bit. But first I wanted to highlight one issue. Um, my hose was actually in contact with the side of the air box here, it's kind of sharp, and then the vibrations was causing it to kind of get gouged. Uh, I noticed it. I used a Dremel tool to cut away, make a little bit of a clearance. That way it doesn't touch, doesn't contact. And then I taped up the small tear in the hose with some um, electrical tape. So take a look at that on your Vulcan. Make sure it's not an issue. Following the hose back from the front cylinder, it connects up right here to the top of the suction valve. And here it is again, one more from a wider angle. Front cylinder hose goes under the frame this way and connects up to the top of that suction valve. Next, let's look at this hose right here. This hose here gets connected up right here on the left side of the Vulcan, the left side of the suction valve, travels underneath, and then I'll show you where this connects up to your um, airbox. It gets connected right to this bottom part of your air intake, of your um, intake box. Now there's one more hose attached to the suction valve. It's this smaller hose right here on the right side of the motorcycle. Let's zoom on in and follow this little hose. So here we are real close to the suction valve. The small hose that I'm showing you is right here on the right side. Follow it along and it connects up to a T valve and it gets connected to the rear side facing um, T valve right there. Next, I want to show you a different angle of that T-valve. We're going to zoom in above the rear cylinder right here in between the top of the rear cylinder and the frame. I want to show you where this right hose, I want to show you where that goes. It gets connected up to the carburetor. So let's follow that along on the top of the cylinder. Gets connected up right to this port on the um, carburetor. So with the air side mostly taken care of, let's take a break. Let's go over to the carburetor and look at the fuel side. At the left side of the bike, let's look at this line, this line, and this line. First, starting with this. This is your vent line. It gets connected up to the center part of the petcock. I'll show you that next. Um, but just note that in your Vulcan, it's most likely black. Um, I replaced my black line. It was cracked and decayed. I replaced it with some 3 16th inch fuel line. This brass center port here on the petcock, this is where the vent line gets connected up to, and I'll show you that when I put the fuel tank back on the motorcycle. Coming back to the carb, these are your two fuel lines. This side right here gets connected to the left side of the petcock, this right here on the right side of the petcock. 
Um, starting with the left side fuel line, let's follow this back and see where it goes. I'm gonna get this right side fuel line out of the way. The left side fuel line goes above the carburetor, above this hose here, which I'll get to in a bit. And then it um, carries back down, it follows back down this way, right there. And I'll show you where it connects up to. Right in here, there is a black um, elbow that points up. That fuel line, the left side of the petcock, connects right up into it. Coming back to the carburetor, I'll show you where the right side fuel line connects up to. This right side fuel line is a little bit easier to show on camera. It goes down behind the carburetor and gets attached to that black elbow right down in there. Let me try to zoom in. And here's a good viewpoint zoomed in as to where the fuel hose gets connected to. Lastly, there is one more set of hoses that we need to talk about. Let's move this hose out of the way. This is, again, the uh, fuel hose for the right side of the petcock. And you'll see back in there, um, right there, is a T-valve. Let me show you a better view of that. Here's a better view of that T-valve. Let's first take a look at this connection, which goes to the left and down. Following it left and down, it connects up right in there. Um, right there. Hose of the T-valve that gets connected to the top right here. This one goes up and out to the other side of the motorcycle, and it gets connected to the airbox. And here's what that looks like from the right side of the motorcycle. T-valve is right here. Is this hose here. Follow it along, and it goes right into the airbox right here. I just noticed this myself, but um, this hose that I showed you for the right side airbox on my Vulcan, I don't have a hose on the left airbox. Let me show you. So for the left side airbox, I don't have a hose. And then the port here, um, nothing's connected to it. It's just how it is. This is a US spec, um, but a non-California spec Vulcan 750. If you have a California spec Vulcan 750, screenshot this for the evaporative emission control system hose layout. And then also screenshot this for um, some extra help. Next, let's look at the um, hose that goes to the bottom right side of this T-valve, right where I'm pointing right there. Right there. I'm gonna zoom in right here. And it connects up right there, right where the tip of my finger is kind of pointing. It's a little bit out of focus, but that's the best view I can show. There we go. There's another um, air hose that's connected up to your intake box. Let me show you where it connects up to the intake box um, in a close-up view, and then I'll show you where it goes. Here we are on the left side of the motorcycle above the carburetor, and then this air hose gets connected up to the bottom side of the intake box. It runs underneath the frame here. And it um, continues over here with the rest of the suction valves, goes underneath this part of the frame, and then it carries on right down there. I'll show you where it goes from the other side, from the right side of the motorcycle. Take off this Vulcan 750 side cover, and you'll see that um, air hose that I'm following carrying on down, and it gets connected up to the bottom of a little canister, and I'll show you what that looks like from the underside of the motorcycle. I'm going to be crawling right up there and I'm going to be looking straight up to show you where this hose connects up. That covers the fuel and air and, and vent hose setup on this um, bike. A little bit complicated. I hope this helped out. Um, I'm sorry that I'm not taking anything apart. Uh, I'm worried about myself being able to put it back together the right way. So I wanted to be able to show you and help you, but also not remove anything from my motorcycle. At the end of this video, I'll show some screenshots, some photos from the climber service manual, a little bit of um, some diagrams as to what it looks like on paper. So if you're looking for that, fast forward to the end of the video. Next, I'm going to show you how to connect up back the fuel tank with all the hoses and get everything 
back up in riding condition. It makes it easier to lift if there's not much fuel in the tank. I've got roughly, I don't know, only half a gallon or less left. As you're lifting it in place, you want to make sure that you clear the fuel level sensor. It gets connected up right here. I'll show you that in a bit. You want to make sure that these two um, hoses are free. We'll connect them up in a bit. And then all the while, you want to be aligning a couple of different bolts. You'll want to align this mounting area right here at the base of the tank. And then on the left and right, uh, the left and right side of the tank, you've got um, these mounting areas. So I'll line that up, but don't put in the bolts quite yet. Connect the fuel level sensor right there. Make sure that's nice and tight, and then just make sure it's tucked away right here, and um, it doesn't get in the way of anything, doesn't get pinched when we put the seat back down. Next, we'll connect up these two hoses here to these two vent holes uh, of the gas tank. But before we do, Take note that this part of the vent tubes here isn't painted. Um, do a little inspection. Make sure that you don't have any rust. The ethanol in fuel nowadays is very hygroscopic, which means it readily absorbs moisture, water, out of the atmosphere. So if your bike has been sitting um, and that water collects in your fuel system, um, your rust can develop here and then start traveling backwards towards the tank. So if you have any rust, take care of it now. Here's what that looks like all connected up. It's okay if your hose doesn't go all the way up on the, um, uh, the vent holes there. Next, let's move on to the carburetor and the petcock. This hose here that I've been calling the left hose in this video gets connected up to this left side of the petcock right there. This is the vent line, gets connected up to this brass nipple that I showed you earlier. And then the hose that I've been calling the right hose gets connected to the right side of the petcock. If it helps, use a heat gun to get some heat in here, heat up the hoses. I find that it goes on the um, nipples of the petcock a little bit easier. Also make sure that you got these two hose clamps um, readily available at the end of your fuel line. So if they happen to have fallen back down due to gravity and they're like inside there, um, take off the fuel tank, reach your arm in there, and grab these clamps first. Um, that way these clamps help to keep the fuel line onto the petcock. And if for whatever reason your Vulcan doesn't have these clamps or if you've lost them, um, I, don't, I don't see why you can't use zip ties or anything else just to secure the fuel line onto the petcock so it doesn't come off. Here's what the fuel line looks like attached to the right side of the petcock. Um, in addition to using heat, I also found what helps is if I used my two index fingers I reached in here and I grabbed the fuel line and I pinched it and I just, I just kept pushing, I, I kept pulling back. Took a couple of iterations, but um, every time I pulled back, I got the fuel line a little bit more onto the petcock. And that's what the left side fuel line looks like all connected up. To get myself some extra clearance and space, I did take off this spark plug wire here for the front side, uh, left side cylinder. So I'm gonna put that back in. And if you've got bigger hands, you can also probably take off this air box very easily just to get some extra clearance to work around in there and grab that fuel line. Next, let's put this vent line back on the petcock there. I can't get it all the way on right now. As you can see, there's a little gap here between the fuel line, uh, the vent line and the bottom of the petcock. So what I'm gonna do is tighten down the fuel tank, get it in its final location, all tightened down. Then I'll come in here and I'll be able to um, secure this up and I'll show you. Don't tighten this down too much just yet. Let's do the side mounting bolts. That way if we need to shimmy around the tank uh, a little bit, we can. And then after we get those side bolts in, we'll come back here and tighten this up. Your side mounting bolts should also be 12 millimeters. Again, don't tighten it down too tight just yet. We're gonna do the left side of the Vulcan next. Um, but first, I just wanted to show you close up what this looks like. Here's kind of like that mounting tab attached to the fuel tank. The metal on metal, it gets connected right up to the motorcycle. And then on the other side, make sure you have your, um, I don't know, I'm just gonna call this a rubber damper, and then your 12 mil bolt. Now with the fuel tank mounted up with the three points, 
you can go ahead and tighten down the three bolts. With the fuel tank securely mounted, I was able to use more force to get this vent line fully on the nipple of the petcock. Finally, before you forget, turn the petcock back on. On is in the down position. So instead of showing screenshots of the climber service manual with the diagrams of the fuel hoses and vent hoses and everything, instead I'll leave a link in the description down below to the Vulcan 750 forum, and all of this is available electronically. Also check out the other helpful links in the description down below, and thank you very much for watching. Let me know if you have any questions. Thank <laughs> you.